Me for heist this year tune for all and the children out there with it. No, this year not no Jamaican tune. This year a gullah tune. Food, storytelling, music. music. I had a celebration of culture and good people. Hi, I'm Dr. Howard Conyers with another episode of Nourish. I'm here in my home state of South Carolina, visiting Joseph Field Farms to talk to my friend, my bubba, Gullah Chef BJ Dennis to learn about the Gullah Geechee food tradition. Man, it's good to see you, my brother. Hey, big bro, what's going on, my, bubba? I'm here because I want my friends and the rest of the country to know about the Gullah Geechee culture, and there's no other person I could find better than Chef BJ Dennis. Boy, ready to crack your teeth talk like this, yeah? <laughs> yeah, you do that. Yeah, hey, man. Hey. Yeah, it's the culture, right? It's the culture. It's, it's the culture, it's the culture, the basis of a lot of African American culture here in the, in the whole country. We're having a homecoming. Combining Gullah Geechee food traditions and old school pit barbecue. Drawing together friends and family from all over the country. But before we get to the celebration, we gotta prepare the meal and talk food culture. So what's on the menu for tonight? Tonight, well, we're gonna have, um, obviously we're having a beautiful pit barbecue, um, also wild and pig. Also wild and pigs, some say are um, direct descendant of the Iberico in Spain. Got a John's Island. Lamb or sheep, but I think it's a lamb. I think it's a lamb. Um, we doing some red rice, okra soup. We're gonna do some fresh cucumber tomatoes and some muscadine, um, muscadine vinegar. Okay. Muscadine grape vinegar. Oh man, that's that's a classic. And we're gonna have some just some straight up fruit, man. Nice peaches, watermelon, strawberries for people to eat on. Watermelon tea and some uh, ginger tea. So, BJ, help help explain to me what is the Gullah Geechee culture. Gullah Geechee culture. Um, well, the Gullah culture is, some people say is we held more of our Africanisms than um, any other uh, African-American culture in the country. Gullah Geechee culture is centered mostly in the coastal region of South Carolina and Georgia, where enslaved Africans working on rice plantations formed a unique cultural identity and food ways. Like, why do you think it was here in the Sea Islands where it would just kind of remain really kind of pure without any kind of English influences? because we were isolated, just us. Probably no more than maybe 50, 60 years ago, you couldn't get off this island without a boat. Look, you can go right back there, probably, what's that, 100 yards, and put down a, um, put down a trap, catch crab, mullet back there, when black bass running. You got the water right here. Right. Seafood is big, but no low country meal is complete without rice, and not just any rice. One of those things that, you know, we're a rice culture, but in the old days, you know, rice was typically eaten maybe once a week because when they, you, you grew your own rice. So on Saturday, you would clean your rice for Sunday's dinner. Rice was introduced to the American colonies in the mid-1600s. By the mid-1700s, enslaved West Africans brought to the coastal Carolina region introduced the complex agricultural knowledge needed to grow their crop on a large scale. By the end of the 18th century, South Carolina was the largest rice producer in America. And you gotta realize who grew that, who picked that, who, who had the knowledge, knowledge before they came over here? Knowledge of that was a science. It was also astronomy because you had to study the moons, the tides. Didn't understand how the tides flood the fields. And we were brought here. Our ancestors were brought here because they had that knowledge. One of the main dishes of the Gullah cuisine is red rice. Explain a little bit about the red rice so people understand what's the origin of red rice. Uh, I, I say red rice is the daughter of jollof, which is a West African rice. But a lot of elders also tell me that. When you study it, we eat red rice a lot of times with fish. And the Senegalese national dish is Chabu Jin. Ch Chabu Jin. So I was told, no, this is actually the daughter of Chabu Jin, but I think red rice looks more along the lines of jollof. But that's a whole battle they have that, in West that, Africa that, that I don't even want to get into that, but. So one preparation for red rice is made from sauteed rice, baked in a buttery, seasoned tomato broth, then mixed with vegetables and sausage or seafood. Red rice, even here, it varies. It varies. Because people will say, I want my red rice sticky. I want my red rice a little more dry. I want my grains to separate. I want my greens separated. I don't want a bunch of meat in mine. I want a bunch of sausage in it. You know, it depends on the cook. Some people might want to throw crab meat in it. Some people want to throw okra in it sometimes. Okay. It's all about the vibe, you let's, know? Let's check on this fire and then we'll make sure we got everything set up. What else we need to get set up for this? We're also pit barbecuing for the event, the way my father taught me to do it. We dug a pit and used things we found on the farm. Pipe for the rack, fence wire, and roofing tin for the top. Same with the burn barrel, cinder blocks, metal wire, and roofing tin. We hear Joseph Fields farm. His family been farming for generations. They had this land since I believe 1850, which started across the street. Um, he is one of the 
only certified organic farmers in the area. The lineage here, the Gullah culture here is deep. I mean, it's rooted, rooted very, very deep here. He's also my, my cousin through marriage, so. He just, oh, so family. Family, yes. While we're getting ready for tonight's meal, what Gullah dishes are we snacking on? This is a cultural dish, almost similar to, well, I wanna say gumbo the, gumbo, the, gumbo the herbs, but all in the same family of dishes. You know, greens and okra cooked down for a good while, and I got some local crab, sweet potato, turkey neck, and uh, potatoes in there. But this is all that same lineage of the West African diaspora. In the West Indies, somebody might say, oh, that's Kalaloo. You know, it looks like gumbo's the herbs and, and all of it. But I think the ancestors used to cook what was available. Another low country staple, grits. With industrial farming and then modernization, you know, we got into the quick grits. Some people even forgot, probably don't even know how to cook real grits anymore because you just can't st sit there for five minutes and voila. These take about 30 to 40 minutes to cook. You know, grits are usually the backbone to a lot of things. Stew dishes, like smothered shrimp, crab and gravy, where we're gonna do fried fish today. And some lovely, lovely little bit of butter in those grits and make it nice and lush. You know, I think food, it kind of, kind of bridges that gap because we were so separated the food is kind of bringing us, bridging those gaps back together. and bringing it back together. I decided to ask musician and BJ's neighbor, Kendra Joy, about red rice to help explain other aspects of Gullah culture, like the language. Our ancestors needed a way to communicate, and so we came up with the language of Gullah, and that's what we have today. People in Charleston or the Gullah Geechee culture have a first language, and it's not English. The Gullah language itself is very unique, but the dialect we still have in like the low country. So we may not necessarily speak the traditional Gullah language, but we still have the dialect. So that's why a lot of people think that we are from the islands because we have that thick dialect. Local handmade sweetgrass baskets are also woven into the culture. When our ancestors came over from West Africa, they were making these type of um, different things that will help us to be able to do our work a little bit smoothly. Even the rhythm of what's known as a low country clap is essential to Gullah Geechee family and church gathering. That came from, once again, West African rhythms. Give me a popular song where that may be seen or hear it. We, we hear a lot. Uh, so, okay. Uh, the Kum, Kumbaya song. And so you hear a lot of people who say Kum, Kumbaya, but y'all know that's not the song. So that's not how it goes. And so it's Kum, Kumbaya. So Kumbaya, my Lord, Kumbaya, which means come on by, come by, come by here, Lord. Kumbaya, my Lord, Kumbaya. Kumbaya, my Lord, Kumbaya. Kumbaya, my Lord, Kumbaya. Oh, Lord, Kumbaya. Oh Lord, come by ya. Oh Lord, come by ya. Come by ya. So that's how you do that. It's just really, really important that we keep those ties because it just keeps us connected. We share good food, good times, good laugh, and then once again, you end up leaving refreshed. You know, I, that's part of also my thing is like, you know, I, got, I went to come to school, learn all this stuff, but it's nothing better than the culture that I grew up in. And when I started asking questions, that was better than any culinary school. It was so much that we still was learning, so much that was lost that you had to ask. I mean, watch, watching you do this, and having your father here, who was a, original, you know? Yeah, when we talked about doing this, I mm -hmm. wanted y'all to see something a little bit different. But I wanted y'all to see how, when I, was, when I was a child, what barbecue looked like. I really want to thank you all, all for coming out. Came down here for a graduation, because family is important. And when we do stuff like this, back home, like barbecue is a family thing. But to mash up with BJ and bring the PD and the Low Country together like this, we thought it was very appropriate to do it here in Charleston. There's a lot of people out here and I'd be remiss not to thank my wife and her and my family for coming out here, um, coming down to Charleston, spending a little bit of time. I live in New Orleans, so just be able to spend time with my family is important. There's a lot of other people I could have thanked, but I don't want to leave my names off. And uh, we'll let it go because people are ready to eat. If you have any other Gullah Geechee family recipes or stories, share below and please subscribe to Nourish. I wanted y'all to see like how rustic this is. I wanted y'all, when y'all see, when y'all go eat at Rodney Scott Barbecue or Bees Crackling, they got nice fancy equipment. <laughs> but I want y'all to see like these are pipes that came off this farm. This program is made possible by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting.